Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. My name is Hana Nabila binti Manasruddin and I am the newly appointed Head of Accounting Department in RSB Bank Berhad. I previously worked as the Account Manager in CIMB Bank Berhad and I now wish to contribute my skills and experience to RSB Bank. Today, I together with my teammates would like to walk everyone through our company's operating and interim reporting. But before we start the presentation, allow my teammates to introduce themselves first. Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. My name is Noor Alisa Anjikadama Afizal and I am now employed as an accounting manager at Nash B. Berhad, where I have been working for 9 months. My working job experience includes 2 years as an accountant at Maybank Berhad. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nona Suratina Mekan Binti Zahifi Mekan. My position in RHB Member Hut is an accountant and had been appointed for 5 months. My experience in accounting fees is already 5 years. Okay, without wasting more time, I would like to pass this presentation to our Head of Accounting Department, Ms. Hana, to start the presentation. Thank you, Tina. Now, I would briefly explain about the background of RHB Bank Berhad. RHB Bank Berhad is one of the largest bank banking corporation in Malaysia, as we know, and it was founded by Tan Sri Abdul Rashid Hussein. It is now the fourth largest fully integrated financial services company in Malaysia. RHB Bank provides various banking and also financial products through its subsidiaries which are RHB Bank Berhad, RHB Investment Bank Berhad, OSK Investment Bank Berhad, RHB Insurance Berhad and also RHB Islamic Bank. The group business segments can be divided into five reportable segments which are group retail banking, group business banking, group CBIB, group treasury and global market, and also Group International Banking. Currently, it has one non-reportable segment named Support Center and others. Its current CEO is Datuk Kara Saleh Ramli and the current non-independent, non-executive chairman is Tan Sri Ahmad Badri Muhammad Zahi. As at 31st December 2020, RHB Bank has recorded 2.03 billion next net income. Next, I'll pass the presentation to Alisa for the management approach. Thank you so much, Hana Nabila. Without wasting our time, let's proceed to the next segment, which is Management Approach. In Management Approach, I'll be explaining in details on RHB Berhad, factors of having segmented report, type of segment, and chief of decision making and its responsibilities. Having a segmented reporting is the first thing to keep in mind. What RHB Berhad had to take into account for the following three factors. First is the nature of company's commercial activity. Anything done by a firm with the sole goal of maximizing profit is considered an example of this. And second, is manager responsible for the operation in place? This is meant by segment manager is responsible to monitor and communicate directly with the top operation decision maker regarding the segment performance. And the last one is information presented to the board of director. Since the Board of Directors reports provide reliable information about the company's overall performance, the top operational decision maker must consult them in making decisions. Now, back at the nature of business activity. Although RHB is fully integrated financial services provider in Malaysia, it matures lies in both product and services offering. These four aspects and criteria must be taken into consideration. A few examples of products include RHB Singapore and RHB Group Itabahat, while RHB Merchant Terminal, RHB Bispower SME Property Loan, RHB Corporate Card, and RHB Liability Insurance are some examples of the services. The type of customer is also a consideration. RHB consumers are segmented depending on where they live. Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Brunei, Cambodia, and Laos are RHB's most common consumer bases. Lastly, the method used to supply services anticipates the requirements and preferences of the consumer and provide goods as required by the customer. Types of segments are the next management approach I'll be discussing. Group retail banking, group wholesale banking, support centers and others, group business banking and group international business are all elements of RHB Berhad. I'll go into further depth on the guide. First, group retail banking. Group retail banking focuses on providing products and services to particular customer as well as offering a wide range of financial services such as credit facilities, deposit collection and other financial services such as unit, trans 
Unit Trust Fund Management, Islamic Fund Management and Wills. Second is the Group Business Banking. Group Business Banking offers financing for small and medium sized firms as well as deposit collection from wholesale clients. As for the support and others, it consists of results from the company other business decisions because the results are not relevant to the group. They are not disclosed separately and are included in financial statement everything. Next is the International Business Group, which focuses on commercial banking, products and services tailored to the need of customer in foreign countries. Group wholesale banking is the last type of banking I'll be describing. Group treasury and group markets are one of the two parts of group wholesale banking that engage in proprietary and non-proprietary trading in fixed income securities and foreign exchange, derivatives trading and structuring, customer based on foreign exchange and money market transaction, as well as funding investment in ringgit and foreign currency. The next part is group corporate banking and group investment banking where companies, multinational firms, funding institution, government and state-owned enterprises are among the clients that the bank serve. Group investment banking services also include debt restructuring, M&A, private placement and private equity funding. Lastly is the chief of decision making and its responsibility. In RHB, management committee has been appointed as the group primary decision maker in the field of business operation. And organization business units are led by chief of decision making officer, who is in charge of allocating resources and assessing performance. In addition, they must also be aware of the company's significant risk and define a risk tolerance for themselves. Ensure that their company's strategic plan is long-term value-oriented and encompasses economic, environmental and social factors under other responsibilities. Thank you, Alisa. Next, there are two methods to determine the reportable segments of an entity, which is first by using the 10% quantitative threshold test and second, the 75% of total revenue requirement. Under the 10% test, there are three bases that we can use, that we can choose to use, which is the first one is revenue basis, profit or loss basis, and also asset basis. When the segment passes the 10% test of any basis, the segment is to be separately disclosed as reportable segment in the financial statements. Segments that do not pass the 10% test will be combined under all other segments. However, management can disclose the reportable segment that do not pass the 10% test separately if the management thinks that the information is significant to the users of financial statement. The 75% test is only applicable if the segment has passed the 10% test under revenue basis. For RHB Bank, we use the revenue basis to determine our reportable segment. Based on the calculation performed using the revenue basis, RHB Bank currently has four re reportable segments which are Group Retail Banking, Group Business Banking, Group CBIB and also Group Treasury and Global Market. Group International does not pass the 10% threshold test, hence it is to be combined with Support Centre and other, as all other segments in the financial statement. Next, we perform the 75% test where the external revenue of reportable segment is divided by the total revenue of all segments which will produce 93.67%. It is more than 75% of the total revenue requirement, hence no further adjustment is needed because it has fulfilled the requirement of 4 reportable segments and 1 non-reportable segments. This is the new segmental report that has been prepared by our accountants based on our previous calculation with four reportable segments and one non-reportable segment. Thank you, Hannah. Now we are at the last section in the segmental reporting, which is the conclusion. I will present to you the advantage and disadvantage of the segmental reporting. The first advantage are transparency. It helps in acknowledge which segment give higher profit and which are not. For example, if it segment by group, we can know what group provide higher profit and which group is trained to the bottom line. Besides, it can help to avoid any misstatement or error in preparing financial statement in order to give accurate information to the stakeholder. This is because stakeholders need a correct information to evaluate our performance and management. Next, the adva next advantage is it can assist the user in evaluating, analyzing and understanding the company financial statement. 
As the segmented report, enable management to monitor performance, allocated resources, and revise the business and market strategy. The external users such as investor analysis and the other users of entity's financial statement can review the entity operation from the same perspective as management. This is because the segmented report required the management information for public entities to be published externally. The user will have better understanding about the business and its potential cash flow. They also can have a better sense of fluctuation in the company, like it must affect their decision making. For example, semester reporting show where those earnings are coming from is the earning earned much better. Now we will look at the advantage of segmental reporting. Firstly, is the cost of disclosure. In preparing a segmental report, it will incur more cost. This is because of the provision of S. Strong information along with the routing information to hold to have all this information we have to hire employees to manage all this information thus it raises the company operational cost basis of segmentation also is one of the disadvantage of segmenting reporting as they are the three basis in calculating the reportable segments such as revenue basis profit or loss basis and lastly the asset basis is hard to decide which basis of the company the company want to use in pre presenting their segmental report this is because each basis has their own limitation and issue and its own calculation Thus, it's hard to the chief operating decision making CODM to choose which basis of the measurement to be used to determine the segment profit or loss and the asset or liability as the same basis will be used for the segment report. Now, it's the end of the segmental reporting. We will move to the second part of this presentation, which is interim report MRFS 134. Firstly, we will we look at the basis of preparation of the interim report that has been prepared by RHB Member Heart for the year 2020. RHB, RHB Member Heart has prepared this interim financial statement on a quarterly basis. It has a four quarter starting from 1 January 2020 and ends at 31st December 2020. It's an audited interim financial statement where it has been prepared compliance with Malaysian Financial Reporting Standard. MFS 134 Interim Financial Reporting issued by Malaysian Accounting Standard Board MASB. As today we present interim report on fourth quarter and the 31st December 2020, this interim financial statement should be read in conjunction with the audited financial statement of the group and the bank for the financial year and the 31st December 2019. Now we are moving on the next part, accounting policy used in preparing the interim report. The group and the bank of this company have adopted accounting policies and presentation for the financial statement are consistent with those adopted in the financial statement for the financial year and the 31st December 2019. We will look at the two accounting policies which is MFS 116 Property Plan and Equipment and MFS 138 Intangible asset. For property, plan, and equipment in accordance with MRF 116, where the company is using the cost model method, while the depreciation is measured by using a straight line basis to write down their cost to their residual value over their estimated useful life. Property, plan, and equipment are stated at the cost less accumulated depreciation and impairment loss, if any. For RHB member, hard fee hold land, building in progress, and renovation are not depreciated, but other property plants and equipment are depreciated using the straight line basis. The table provided shows the principal owner depreciation rates of the following property plants and equipment. Second accounting policy is intangible assets are organized at cost. Generally, the identified intangible asset of a group and the bank have a definite useful life. Thus, it is amortized using the straight line method over the estimated useful economic life. All intangible assets that comprise of computer software license and other intangible assets that consist of computer Customer relationship, brand, trending rights, and membership are stated at the cost less accumulated amortization and impairment losses, if any, plus reversal of impairment, if any. The table provided show the useful life of the following intangible asset. Now, I will pass my presentation to Alisa. Thank you so much to Nostratina for the thorough explanation on the accounting policy. Following that, I'll discuss the very types of interim report. RHP Perhart has published quarterly interim report. This statement comprises the comprehensive income statement, financial statement, set statement of financial position, statement of changes in equity, and statement of cash flow. This statement is prepared as at 31st December 2020. Next, I'm going to identify the period of the current and comparative of each statement prepared by RHP Berhad. Please note that this period is on the fourth quarter of report. The current reporting period for the statement of financial position is three months whereas the comparative period is 12 months. 
The date are as shown in the table. In terms of profit and loss statements, the current reporting period is the same as the comparative period, which is 12 months. Their reporting dates, however, differ by year. Following that comes the statement of changes in equity. The current reporting period is 12 months, with date ranging from 1st January 2020 to the 21st December 2020. This period is the same as the comparative period. However, reporting date is different, since the comparative reporting date is in 2019. Last but not least is the cash flow statement. This statement was prepared in the same manner as the statement of changes in equity, since both current and comparative reporting periods are the same, which are 12 months. But the year is different. The current year is 2020, whereas the comparative year is 2019. And that concludes my contribution. I will repass this presentation to our accountant, Tina, for the adjustment segment. Thank you, Alisa. Now we are at the last part of the presentation where we make adjustments on the fourth quarter by using the statement of financial position as at 31 December 2020. As you can see, this is the statement of financial position as well of RHB member hub before we make adjustment. The first adjustment is the about property plan and equipment and its depreciation. On the 1st January 2020, the cost and, and the accumulated depreciation of the motor vehicle was 23,232,000 and RM 18,129,000 respectively. RHB has used a straight line method to depreciate all its motor vehicle at the rate of 20% per annum and yet on a yearly basis and none in year of disposal. However, on the 1st October 2020, one of the RHB motor vehicle which a carrying amount of 200,000 was disposed of for a loss of 60,000. The motor vehicle was purchased at the cost of 1 million. On 5th December, RHB purchased uh, two motor vehicles amounting to 1 million each. So we have made an adjustment to the motor vehicle as in the fourth quarter we have two transaction happening where one is the disposal of the motor vehicle and another one is the acquisition of the two motor vehicle. The disposal of the motor vehicle has been removed from the cost and the accumulated possession of the motor vehicle amounting to RM1 million and it 800,000 respectively. The 800,000 is the accumulated depreciation of the disposed motor vehicle resulting from deducting of the cost and cost of the disposed motor vehicle 1 million which is carrying amount of 200,000. The acquisition of the new motor vehicle of 2 million has been added to the cost of the motor vehicle. We will calculate the amount of depreciation of the year 2020. Thus, the calculation of the depreciation will be 20% the annual rate of the motor vehicle times which the uh, 24,232,000 total cost of the motor vehicle on 31st December 2020 and times it with 12 per 12 month as the adjustment is made in the fourth quarter resulting RM4,846,400. Finally, the carrying amount of the motor vehicle as at 31st December 2020 is amounting to 2,056,600 after deducting the cost of the motor vehicle 24,232,000 which is a commuted depreciation of RM22. 22,175,400. Now, I will pass my presentation to Hana for the second adjustment. Thank you, Tina. Next, moving on to the second adjustment, which is on accounts receivable. So, during the fourth quarter of 2020, the company has discovered that there is an impairment to the accounts receivable. As at 1st January 2020, the amounts of account receivable was amounted to 929 million. 870,000. It is estimated at that time that only 85% of the accounts receivables are collectible. However, as at 31st December 2020, the amount of collectible has risen to 95%. For the adjustment, the first step that we need to do is to determine the amount collectible. As at 1st January 2020, the amount collectible is 790,385,500. But as at 31st December 
31st December 2020, the amount of collectible has risen up to 95%. Therefore, the amount to be collected is 883,376,500. Next is to determine the amount of allowance for doubtful debt as an expense in the statement of profit or loss and to determine the amounts of accounts receivable in the statements of financial position. For first quarter, the, um, the amount of allowance for doubtful debts to be recognized as an expense in statement of profit or loss is RM 139,480,500, whereas the amount, the amount to be recognized as an accounts receivable in statement of financial position is RM 790,389,500. For the fourth quarter, the amount of collectible has risen up to 95%, so the amounts to be recognized as the allowance for doubtful debt in the statement of profit or loss has decreased to 46,493,500 when the and the amount to be recognized as the accounts receivable in the statement of financial position has risen to 883,376,500 since the amount of collectible has risen from 85% to 95% we need to reverse back the amount that was previously recognized as an expense in the statement of profit or loss. So the amounts to be re reversed is RM 92,987,000. So this amount is to be recognized as an income in the statement of profit or loss. Next, this is the extract of the fourth quarter of statement of financial position as at 31st December 2020 for RHB Bank Berhad where we present our previous adjustments that have been made on the non-current assets of motor vehicles and also current assets of accounts receivables. That is all from us for our presentation today. Thank you very much for your cooperation and attention and see you next time.